Rarely do players improve as much as Joshua Roy between their second and third junior seasons. Roy went from barely scoring a point per game in his draft year with the St. John Sea Dogs to leading the QMJHL in points the next year with the Sherbrooke Phoenix. The change in environment can explain part of the increase in production, but Roy also made adjustments to his game in many areas. His improvements make him a better NHL candidate than he was a year ago, but his development is also far from done. In this video, we're going to break down one of Roy's games from last season to look at his strengths and weaknesses what he still has to improve if he wants to be not just a junior scorer, but an NHL one. Territoire des Huskies, belle passe. Alain Boucher, le but! Axel! Un jeu à trois de parents vers Roy à Julien Axel. In this shift, Roy gets a shot off the face-off and then positions himself well defensively. He could have shorted check to identify the passing lane and place his stick in it. The pass gets through, but his defenseman is right there to stop the play anyway. The play continues in the defensive zone. Again, Roy is well positioned, but he's not checking behind him all that much. It doesn't matter too much here, because it's a battle on the wall. But if the opposition managed to escape inside space, they could start aiming for passes in the slot. By mapping the ice, by shoulder checking, Roy would be better prepared to cut those passes. That's a pretty good forecheck from him here. He creates a turnover that leads to a scoring chance. He then back checks defensively, and because he's in a good position, he wins the puck. Michel dans le coin, et voici Julien Actil. 15 minutes 33 à faire en première période, 0 à 0. The play turns into a rush. This is an occasion for a net drive. He can't get a pass, so the best thing he can do is to drive forward to get his stick on a potential rebound or to stretch the defense to give more room to his teammate. Roy's off-puck game has improved quite a lot over the past year, but there are still many details he has to work on on the defensive side and offensive side, like driving the net even more. The next shift is on the power play. It gives us a good example of what happens when Roy takes better routes. He first blocks a rim out of the zone by skating down the wall on the forecheck, and then he attacks the slot. He gets the puck and a couple of great scoring chances. There's a regroup, his defenseman gets the puck, passes it to Roy, who gets another scoring chance of the rush. I really like this shot. He slows down a bit while taking it, but it's still an in-stride release. He shoots inside crossovers with his head up, and he aims low blocker instead of too high. He almost scores. The power play continues and Roy creates another chance with his movement. Instead of standing flat-footed at the half wall, he reloads the puck high and moves down to create new passing angles. From this new point of attack, he managed to find a play inside. This is a great shift from Roy overall. He starts by stealing the puck away from an opposing defenseman. He follows him and then uses his body to seal him from the puck. That's exactly what he had to do here. The other team wins it back, but Roy forces them to dump it in the zone by pressuring their rush. The play moves to the offensive zone. This time, Roy disrupts the opposition's breakout. He gets the puck and pulls off one of the best passes I saw in the QMJHL this season. He shows great anticipation. He knows that the defenders are going to rush him, so instead of using his backhand to shoot on net, which is always a weaker shot, he drags those defenders and the goalie with him one way and passes back to his teammate behind him. Here, Roy gets the puck in the neutral zone. He sees that the defender is cutting toward him, so he tries to pull the puck counter to the feet of that defender to attack inside. It was a pretty good idea, but the puck doesn't get through and the play goes the other way. Roy is again right there on the back check to prevent a clean entry from the opposition. Sherbrooke tries to break out, but the puck turns over. Everyone skated too high, too fast, and the breakout was not secured. Because of this, Roy Noranda gets a great chance. We saw many of Roy's strengths in the past few shifts. His shot is very dangerous in the QMJHL, and his ability to set it up with movement and precision should make it dangerous at the professional level too. He can also read defenders, see when they're vulnerable, and exploit their weaknesses. His effort away from the puck is also much better than last season. This is an interesting shift to talk about in terms of spacing and rotation. The puck gets in the offensive zone. Roy arrives on the forecheck. His team gets possession, and Roy aims to become an option for a pass. But he probably gets too close to his teammate here. He's not a great option for a pass, as even if number 22 gives him the puck here, the defenders can easily switch on Roy and shut him down. Fortunately, number 22 makes a great play here. He manages to protect the puck until he can clear enough space for Roy. But Roy is still facing a pretty set defense, and he doesn't have many great options. When his teammate got the puck, Roy could have opened the offensive play a bit more by staying further from his teammate, by moving down, or by letting his defenseman take the puck instead. In this shift, his teammate attacks the middle of the rush. The puck gets dumped in, Roy wins the race to it, and puts in the rebound. 
chez l'adversaire. Un rondel échappé par Simon et le but. C'est 3-0, cafouillage. This is another great playmaking moment from Pac. His team gets the puck, he attacks the wide line, controls his speed to get a pass, and then he creates a give and go. He hides the passing lane with his stick handling. He buys time and makes it seem like he is going back to his forehand, but he uses his backhand to slide the puck to his teammate who accelerated past defenders. Here we see the limit of Roy's skating ability. He knocks the puck down in the offensive zone and wins a race to it, but the defender is right there on his back. He doesn't really feel like he can beat him outright with a turn inside space. That turn would open up the play for his team. Instead, he makes a bank pass to his teammate down the zone. The play places his teammate in a difficult position. A more elusive skater could have faked that play, turned the D skates that way, and exploded into space here to attack inside or find a better play. Roy can work around his skating in the QMJHL by using his stick handling and his teammates. At the pro level, that skating will probably become a bigger issue for him. His lack of quickness and elusiveness, if they don't improve, will prevent him from creating certain plays and limit his production. Roy strides very wide with not enough ankle flexion. As a result, his upper body hunches over the ice. This inefficient form forces him to work harder to get to and maintain speed. It also prevents him from making quick and explosive lateral movements to shake pressure. Roy Noranda attacks in this shift. Roy is well positioned in his team's forecheck and intercepts a pass. He lacks the momentum to pull off this net drive with the puck, but his technique is still pretty good. He extends the puck away from his body with one hand and shields it with the other and his back and leg. Roy has some physical skills. He can protect the puck against bigger opponents with his body. It's an ability that will serve him very well in the pro game. Roy gets the puck inside the offensive zone here because of a nice play by his line mate. I like his poise and awareness as he circles the net. He sees that his teammates aren't really in a position to receive passes, so he holds on to the puck. But then he decides to dangle a defender when he had the space to shoot or cut inside here. Roy's awareness and decision making have improved over the past year, but he sometimes still focuses on defenders instead of reading and seeing the space between those defenders. This is a 3-on-3 -three -three rush. Roy is in the wide lane. When his teammate looks to make a play, Roy is covered. He was late to read the pocket of space that was forming here. He misses his occasion to jump inside it. His teammate could have helped him by slowing down or by faking his shot to open a passing lane to Roy when he attacked this position. This is a play that was mistimed by both players here. Spacing and off-puck routes like this don't matter too much at the QMJHL level but they will matter at the AHL and NHL level. This is overall a pretty good defensive sequence from Roy, with only one mistake at the end. He protects the middle and stays with his attacker. I like the shoulder check here to find that attacker and remove the passing lane to him. As the defensive presence drags on, there's a coverage confusion. Roy is not the only one at fault here. Because he's late to declare his check and skate to him, the opposition has time to initiate a passing play that leads to a goal. Le lance est le but! 5-4, Félix Allard! In this one, Roy takes a hit to dump the puck in the zone. His teammate gets it. Roy positions himself for a pass and a possible one-timer. The play moves high and leads to a goal. They are coming in the second period and in the third. Attention, Heinz advances! The tire is Tyson Heinz! This last sequence gives us another example why off-puck positioning, spacing and routes matter. Because Roy pops open here, because he plays in between two opponents, he attracts both of them on himself. As Roy is a threat for a shot, the high defensive winger comes down to help his defenseman and check Roy. Roy collapses the opposing formation on one side of the ice, opening up the other one for his defenseman. We can now easily come down and score. This is only one game of Roy, but overall, the shift still presents his strengths and weaknesses quite well. Roy's shot and handling skills are probably his two main strengths. He can beat vulnerable goalies and defenders quite easily in the QMJHL. He has improved his decision making and his overall effort a lot since last year. His motor is also better. In terms of weaknesses, I think it's fair to say that Roy has to improve his off puck movements or his ability to find and create space for himself and his team. His awareness of space and opposing attackers could also improve. And his skating too. Bloqué, attention, peut-être une chance pour Roy, 2 contre 1. Joshua Roy avec Mianscom. Roy, le tire, le but! Joshua Roy! At this point of his career, Roy looks more like a junior scorer than an NHL one, which is pretty normal considering his age and where he was selected in the draft. But the good news is that his development is on the right track. Roy improved quite a lot between his draft year and last season, and there's still a lot of potential in his game that hasn't been unlocked. By improving his skating, Roy would project much better to the NHL, as he would be able to escape the opposition and pressure them into mistakes a lot more. 
But really, the key for him to become a top 6 player is to continue to develop his hockey sense, with and without the puck, to stay ahead of the game and avoid having to rely on his speed as much to create. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. You can also check out epringside.com for more prospect analysis.